My name is Dr. David Breen and I'm a consultant interventional and abdominal radiologist at the University Hospital of Southampton. And the James Whale Fund for Kidney Cancer has asked me to talk a little bit about developments in my area, in particular in terms of innovative surgical approaches for um, effectively curing smaller kidney cancers. So with my colleagues, we've uh, worked a lot with uh, ablative energies and we work inside the scanners and um, we've come up with some techniques which are now increasingly used around the world for image guided ablation of small volume kidney cancers. Let's go back a little bit and put this all in context. There's different approaches to cancer and there's a lot happening in kidney cancer. There's medical oncology with developments in chemotherapy. There's surgical oncology which is having surgery, traditional surgery to remove a kidney cancer. There's radiation oncology, which plays a smaller role in uh, kidney cancer, maybe the treatment of a bone lesion. And then there's this arena of interventional oncology where I work, which is the minimally invasive delivery of treatments for kidney cancer. And specifically, we've been working with ablation and in particular cryoablation. That's freezing kidney tumours when they're small to destroy them in situ without invoking bigger surgery and causing as little injury and damage to the kidney itself. One of the things we have to remember in dealing with kidney cancer is that we've got to also preserve kidney function which is important to the well-being of patients. So we've been working on this for many years and uh, we now uh, uh, many patients will be aware that these smaller kidney tumours and I'm talking below five six centimetres are often diagnosed incidentally when you're having a scan for another reason. Many patients have this sort of story and it's worrying when you get that, but many of these lesions are eminently treatable for a good outcome through these new minimally invasive procedures. What we tend to do when we come across these in our meeting, and I sit and work with surgeons and oncologists in this arena, is we'll see a patient, we'll look at their overall picture, um, their fitness for surgery or a less invasive procedure, the size and the shape and the position of a growth on the kidney. But often we're finding that sub five centimeter disease can be treated with this technique. The patients do require a general anesthetic, but that's largely not because the procedure is painful, but because we need patients stock still in order to target these tumors. Um, we perform these operations not in an operating theatre but actually in a scanner and many of you will be familiar with having CT scans in the next few years we may be looking to operating inside the MR scanners, the magnetic resonance scanners. Um, but we put patients to sleep, we position them, we look at the position of the tumour, I will put in a number of probes, so we put in multiple probes in order to induce a, a therapeutic ice ball which destroys the tumour in situ. Now we use argon and the tumour gets extremely cold, as cold as minus 100 degrees centigrade at the centre of the lesion. We can watch and visualise that treatment on the scan. Therein lies the beauty of it because we can tr control the treatment and subsume the tumour plus a surgical margin around it. And we know, and we've done this in hundreds of patients now, that we can get nice surgical margins but spare as much of the background kidney and kidney function and, importantly, spare the patient uh, 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 an operative hole in their side. So now we use argon cryoablation because we can better control it. There is a little more to it than that. Sometimes we have to use fluids and things to, to move the bowel out of the way before we carry out the treatment. But... Um, ourselves, a couple of centres in the States and uh, myself and my group go around and teach in Australia and Europe. Um, this is really a, a, a major innovation I think in the surgical slash interventional oncology developments for kidney cancer and many people will get these tumours diagnosed incidentally and I think there is great hope and optimism in the treatment of these tumours because they're so amenable to a relatively less invasive uh, procedure. We've started a European registry and now hopefully the funding and commissioning bodies are increasingly interested in treating kidney tumours this way because the data is accumulating to show 
this is as effective as traditional surgical approach for smaller volume tumours. Patients need very little pain relief after the operation and the vast majority of our patients, I would say between 95-98% of patients, go home the following day. We hang on to patients overnight just to check that they're feeling well and, and there's no soreness or discomfort. And surprisingly, that's one of the reasons we moved from other heat-based treatments to cold. We find that the cryoablation in particular is very well tolerated. Patients go home. I usually advise them to take a week off work. Some folk are exceptionally keen, self-employed folk, to get back to work for obvious reasons. Um, and on the whole, we've uh, said if you're feeling well, then you take a week off work and you're back at work um, and driving as well a week later. Um, there's just a feeling of a little bit of a dull ache and sometimes a little bit of numbness around the side. But on the whole, these procedures, which are performed through the back, are, are very well tolerated. We then perform a scan um, following that a couple of weeks later to confirm that we've treated the tumour with a margin around it and we tend to put patients under a, a small follow-up regimen with a scan maybe at about a year, three and five years just to check that there's no progression of their disease elsewhere. In this arena where I work in interventional oncology and image guided surgery there are a lot of innovations happening. When we, if we hone this back to, to kidney cancer, I think that there's a lot of work still to be done in conjunction with the James Whale uh, Fund in terms of increasing awareness of this approach to smaller kidney tumours. I've been talking with interventional radiologists to the clinical commissioning groups, yet the availability of this intervention and this innovative surgical approach is really very patchy across the United Kingdom and I think that's work that we'll have to undertake with the James Well Fund and the commissioners to improve the availability of these approaches which show every evidence of being as effective as traditional surgery in the reported literature. What else is happening? Well I think at the moment cryoblation is the way to go for smaller tumours, it's the best ablative energy we're going to increasingly move these procedures and it's not just happening in the kidney, it's happening in the liver and in the lungs as well because we're detecting tumours much earlier when we can expect much better outcomes. Um, it does beggar the question whether patients in their early 60s should all have a scan and I think that's a very interesting and highly controversial uh, debate to be had. Um, I think uh, some of these solid s organ surgeries in the livers and kidneys and what have you, as we detect smaller and smaller disease, will move into the MR scanner where we don't have um, the irradiation of CT and um, I think that there's a major growth in this arena going to occur in the, in the next 10 years. My main concern at the moment is standardisation and increasing the availability and awareness of this option around the United Kingdom. I'm delighted to have this opportunity to talk uh, on behalf of the James Well Fund and uh, in particular to try and advocate some of these novel surgical approaches for smaller volume tumours. I think particularly with uh, the World Cancer Day upon us and uh, kidney cancer in particular, um, there is still a, a crying need to improve the advocacy of these treatments with commissioners and healthcare bodies and to improve the availability across the UK and I think ourselves as clinicians working in conjunction with the James Well Fund and important innovations like the World Cancer Day will help us to move some of these developments forward because sometimes they can be slow without the help of patient advocacy bodies from within the profession itself. So um, thank you for this opportunity to talk to the James Well Fund and on this important World Cancer Day.